Hello again, everybody. We are in the process of going through, hopefully, one of our shortest videos ever. This is another one of those. Like, if we had one a couple weeks ago where we learned a bunch of stuff one day, and the next day we just learned all their converses. Hey, that's what we're doing today. But since we had a little break in there, uh, we may want to review a little bit of stuff about what we learned about rhombuses, rectangles, and squares, because we're going to take that, and again, we're going backwards uh, using the converses of what we did. So our objective is going to be to determine whether a parallelogram is a rhombus or a rectangle, and we're coming out of section 6.5, but let's go ahead and make sure we got a little bit of recollection of what we did uh, a few days ago. Okay, so some of the theorems that we did last time regarding parallelograms and especially the special paragrams, parallelograms, rhombuses, rectangles, and squares. And we remember our definitions. Look over those. But what we found out, here were our summary sheets. When we put it all together, rhombuses behave just like any other parallelogram. And we know those were true for all parallelograms, plus rhombuses had a couple other unique properties. All right, diagonals are perpendicular, and each diagonal bisects a pair of opposite angles. So I'm hoping this is all coming back to you. Rectangles also behave like all parallelograms in these four areas, but had one extra idea there, that its diagonals are congruent. Okay, so... Finally, a square behaved like all parallelograms in terms of opposite sides, consecutive angles, opposite angles are congruent, etc., etc., but also had the properties of rhombuses. Diagonals are perpendicular, uh, and each diagonal bisects the pair of, angle, of opposite angles. And squares also have properties of rectangles. Diagonals are congruent. All right. So... Here we start going backwards. Theorem 616, which is the converse of, uh, of 613. All right, 613 said that if something was a rhombus, then the diagonals are perpendicular. Well, let's take it backwards. If the diagonals of a particular parallelogram are perpendicular, that parallelogram must be a rhombus. Okay, next. Theorem 617, I said kind of converse because it's not quite perfect. 614 had said that if we have a rhombus, then it bisects both pairs of opposite angles. Uh, but for the converse, all we really need to know is one pair of opposite angles uh, is, is, is uh, bisected by the diagonal. So if one diagonal of a parallelogram bisects a pair of opposite angles, then we know it's going to be a rhombus, okay? So where the, the theorem 614 told us about both of those diagonals, dividing out both of those uh, opposite angle pairs, well, the, the converse, all we need is one, okay? If one diagonal bisects a pair of opposite angles so that these are congruent and these are congruent, okay, then we know we got a rhombus last theorem was regarding rectangles and theorem 615 told us if we got a rectangle then the uh, diagonals are congruent well this is telling us the opposite if the diagonals of a parallelogram are congruent then the parallelogram is a rectangle okay so how do we use these things all right pause if you want to follow along but can we conclude that these figures are rhombuses, rectangles, or squares? And why? Pause it, if you wish. And here come the answers. So this one right here, rhombus, rectangle, square. Well, yep. By theorem 617, we're bisecting a pair of opposite angles. It must be a rhombus. Next one. Okay, no, that one doesn't work. Because even if it was a parallelogram, we know we're bisecting the, uh, uh, the the two diagonals. But that's true for any parallelogram, right? That was going back to uh, theorem way back when, that uh, if we knew that we were bisecting the diagonals, we had a parallelogram. But I don't know any of those other properties that, uh, that the, uh, the, the uh, diagonals are congruent, 
that the diagonals form right angles or that the angles are uh, bisected. So no, I know we got a parallelogram here, but I don't can't don't have enough to prove that it's a rhombus, a rectangle, or a square. Again, don't trust your picture just because it looks like a rectangle doesn't mean it has to be. Okay, so in this fact, this one, in fact, we have no proof that that is a rectangle. Got it? Got it. All right, next one. That one. Well. We know the diagonals are perpendicular, so it must be a rhombus. Theorem 616. We also see that the diagonals are congruent, so it must be a rectangle by 618. And, important, since it is both a rhombus and a rectangle, then it must be a square. Okay, next kind of problem we got. Oh, by the way, sorry, little side note here. You notice I put the little, um, little marks here to indicate parallel sides on this figure, but not on these. Why would I have done that? Well, because here's the reason. We needed them in order to prove this by, uh, by, by theorem 617. Okay, I needed to know, oops. All right, so from theorem 611, we know that if the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other, then it's a parallelogram. So in other words, I'm seeing over here that these tell me that those diagonals are bisected. Same over here. Those are telling me diagonals are bisected. And 611 told us that anytime we had diagonals that are bisected, we had a parallelogram. So I knew that these two over here were parallelograms without having to write the little parallelogram mark, all right? Or the parallel marks on the sides. Okay, this one, I didn't know any such thing. Okay, and you know what? I lost a couple parts there. Let's put those back in. All these problems told us were that the angles were bisected. Okay, and that doesn't necessarily prove to us that we have a uh, uh, parallelogram. As a matter of fact, when we get in in a couple days to looking at kites, we will find out that for a kite, those angles here also will be bisected. That and that, that and that will be bisected, but that definitely does not make it into a parallelogram. So anyway, I had to tell you here that we had a parallelogram, and that was the way we knew that this had to be a rhombus. Had that not been given to you, we could not have proven that that was a rhombus. Make sense? Okay. But since I gave it to you, we did know that that was a rhombus. So, again, these we knew were parallelograms from the bisected diagonals. This one, I didn't know was a parallelogram unless I showed you that. Okay? Uh, so that's where we started. Anyway, hope that makes sense. Okay, another kind of problem. Okay, study them, look at them. When you're ready, hit go. I'll reveal answers. So here we go. For ABC to be a parallel, ABCD to be a parallelogram, what is the value of x if this is going to be a rhombus? I'm sorry, ABCD is a parallelogram. That's given to us. What does x have to be for this to be a rhombus? Okay, theorem 617 says that if it's a rhombus, these two angles will be bisected, or we would also know this has to be equal to this. So there's our equation. We solve that equation. We find out x has to be 5. Okay. Next, for the bottom one, uh, DEFG is a parallelogram also given. What does y have to be for it to be a rectangle? Okay, for it to be a rectangle, the uh, diagonals must be congruent and bisected. And since they would have to be both congruent and bisected, every quarter, every one of these uh, uh, half diagonals like this, okay, every one of those four has to be congruent because they are both congruent diagonals that are split in half, and therefore the halves must also be congruent. Okay, and that means that our equation we got to work with 
is right over here. Set those two equal to each other. Solve y is going to have to be 4 to make that true. All right. Hope that all makes sense. And we'll work on it tomorrow.